Welcome once again to Sunshine Teachers Training, where we explore the wonders of the Montessori education. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey around the world with the Montessori country folders. These unique materials ignite a passion for global exploration and bring the world right into the hands of the child. But before we dive into the details, let's start with a demonstration of how to use the Montessori country folders. In this video, we'll focus on the country folder of Switzerland, taking you through the steps of engaging with this material and exploring the rich culture and landmarks of this beautiful country. So obviously, it's not possible to have so many country boxes, but we still want to expose children to different countries. And so we make country folders, which you guys did make for those of you who've done culture would have made it already. So we are going to, I'm going to show you this one. Uh, children, we are going on another trip today and we are traveling to the Red Continent. Does anybody know which one that is? Europe. Right, we're going to Europe. We are going to a land of chocolate mm -hmm. and watches and skiing. Does anybody know where we're going? Switzerland. Right, we're going to Switzerland. This is the map of Switzerland. This is what it looks like on the map. Has anybody here been to Switzerland? No. Yeah. Yes? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. There's still time. Because <laughs> you're so young. <laughs> um, uh, what is the, does anybody know what the capital of Switzerland is? Um, Bern. Bern, that's right. That's right. A lot of people think it's Zurich or Geneva, but the capital is Bern. This is the flag of Switzerland. What colors do you see on it? Right, it's a little bit different from other flags. What makes it different? The square. Yeah, it's a square. Most flags are rectangle, right? Now this flag has a cross in the middle and it also became the symbol of the Red Cross, you know, the ones who provide medical help to people. Um, okay. Here is the currency of Switzerland. It's called the Swiss franc. It's frank. Very colorful, right? Yeah. Okay. One of the favorite pastimes in Switzerland is? That's right. People love to go skiing. And in Switzerland, they have some of the best ski resorts. So people come from all over the world during the skiing season to ski here. And in fact, every February, the schools in Switzerland close so that families can take their children skiing. Yeah. Does anybody know what this is called? The Alps, yeah, the Swiss Alps, they call it. And this covers more than half of the country is covered with these mountains. Okay, they're snow capped and uh, people love, they have beautiful hiking trails so you can go there and you can go hiking, uh, you know, along the mountains. This is a very, very famous castle called the Oberhofen Castle. Oh. Yeah. And you can go inside and you can visit the rooms inside this castle. They even have a toy house for children, a little cottage for children with a whole collection of toys that you can look at. This is something that people eat in Switzerland. Do you know what it's called? Chocolate. chocolate what? This is melted chocolate. Do you know what we call it? Fondue, right. It's chocolate fondue and they also have cheese fondue. It's melted but they have it only in the winter or in the skiing season. And they melt the chocolate and you dip cake and fruit and marshmallows or they dip, melt the cheese and you can dip bread and vegetables and eat it. and keeps you really warm during the winter time. What do you think this family is doing? They are sledding. Yeah, this is also sometimes if you don't want to go skiing, you can go sledding down the mountains. Okay. The national sport of Switzerland is ice hockey, right, ice hockey. It's kind of like soccer where two teams are trying to get a goal, but they're doing it with this puck and they use the hockey sticks. 
and they are skating on ice while they do it. This train is called the Glacier Express. Okay. And the Glacier Express is actually a slow train and it's there to take you to tour around the country and view the mountains and the beautiful countryside and the train has big windows which you can uh, enjoy the view. And Switzerland is also famous for chocolate. chocolate, right. They have some of the best chocolate in the world there. Uh, they have lint and they have fraise and they have some sprungli um, and some other ones that I've forgotten. But they have lots of yummy chocolate there. Okay. Has anybody seen this instrument before? We call it an alp horn. An alp horn, right. Now in the old days when they first used these instruments, it was used by the shepherds and the people who looked after the cows. And what they would do is they would blow this horn and the music would relax the cows and it would be easy for them to milk the cows. It made that because the cows would become calm. But now they use it at music festivals and things like that. Switzerland is also known for having the best watches. Yeah, they make, they are known to be the best watchmakers. And some of the best watches come from there, like Rolex and um, Omega and Patek Philippe. What do you see here in this picture? We call this a cable car. Have you been in a cable car before? Yes. Yeah, we have some here as well. So this cable car, it takes you to the top of the highest mountain called Mount Titlis. Okay. Now what's special about this cable car is it rotates. It turns round and round very slowly as you're going up the mountain. So you can view the whole 360 view of when you're going up. And as you travel, there are three different cable cars. You start at the bottom and you're seeing green meadows with cows grazing. And then you go up and you see the beautiful lakes from above. Then you get into the spongy white clouds. And then finally, you see the snow-capped mountains. OK? All right. So this is how they dress traditionally, of course, Every day they dress like how we all do, but their traditional costume looks like this. And in Switzerland, they speak four languages. Can you guess what they might be? French. No Italian. English. Italian. French, Italian. Italian. German. German. One more? No English. Romance. Oh. Romance, yeah. Okay. This is a very famous lake, and it's called Lake Geneva. Yeah, and it was formed by a glacier that melted, okay, and it has a moon shape. And when you're here and you go boating, you get a beautiful view of the Alps. Okay, this is the national rail railway of Switzerland. It's called the Swiss Federal Railways. And you can go all over Europe by this train. And one of the things that they pride themselves on is that they are always, always on time. They are never, ever, ever late. They said you can set your clock according to the, um, according to the railway. And finally, this is their airline. It's called Swiss Air. What do you see on the tail? Yeah. It's the flag, right, OK. So today, we have traveled to Switzerland. What did we see there? What's the capital? Bern, do you remember what the currency is called? Uh, Swiss francs. Okay. What languages do they speak there? Italian, Italian French, Italian. German, and Romance. Okay. What else is it famous for? Chocolate. Chocolate and watches. What's the national sport? Okay. And what are the pastimes? Skiing, right? And what is the famous mountain range called? Alps. The Alps. Okay. And anything that people eat there, do you remember? Fondue. The fondue. Okay. So today we've taken a trip to Switzerland 
These pictures will be on the shelf if you want to take them and have a look, you know where they are kept. Are we okay? It's okay, it's okay, Nita, wait a little bit. Are we okay? Yeah. All right. So you guys have made this. You can see that we have covered the whole country. We haven't just covered one city. Sometimes I get assignments and you know, people will do France and they're just focused on the Eiffel Tower and Champs-Élysées and things like that. And what about south of France? What about wine country? There's so much, you know, that you have to cover. Like if you choose North America, you can't just focus on New York, right? There's a whole country with different things happening there. So you've got to make sure that you balance it out. You need at least 20 pictures. In, yeah, of course. The size is either A5 or A4. So either A4 or half A4. But if I go smaller than that, then it's a little bit hard for a group to see. Then I'll have the student saying, Miss, I can't see. Teacher, can you show me? I don't know what's going on. It's not pleasant, right? So you want to make them nice big pictures. You've got write-ups on the back okay to help you with some points because you can't always remember everything right okay have all of you made this already yes. okay so you got to remember that you need to have a good quantity of um, pictures you have to continually update it like my picture of that slow train I think there's a new one that's come out I saw an ad um, on YouTube so I guess this has to be updated with um, changing that around. So constantly, you know, think countries are changing, they add new uh, theme parks and things like that, that children are interested in. Put things that children can relate to, animals, <coughs> monuments, and things like that. Okay, now that you've seen the Montessori country, country folder in action, let's discuss the benefits, purpose, and how it awakens a curiosity for global exploration in children. The Montessori country folders serve as windows to the world, allowing children to develop a deeper understanding and appreciation for different countries, their cultures, landmarks, and geography. Through hands-on exploration, children engage with maps, flags, and other visual materials, fostering a sense of connection to the global community. These materials not only promote cultural awareness, but also develop key skills such as fine motor skills, concentration, and independent learning. By working with the country folders, children enhance their knowledge of the world's geography and gain a broader perspective of our diverse planet. Montessori country folders awaken a curiosity for global exploration in children. They inspire curiosity, spark a desire to learn about different countries, and nurture empathy and respect for diverse cultures. These materials lay the foundation for fostering a love of learning and an appreciation for our interconnected world. For parents who want to create a similar experience at home, here are a few tips. Start by selecting a country of interest and gather materials such as maps, pictures and information about that country. Create a folder or a dedicated space where children can explore and learn about the chosen country. When choosing a country to create a country folder for your child, why not ask them which country they would like to travel to, which country would they like to learn about, and together you can choose that country, and maybe even if your child is old enough, you can make the material together. This way they feel very invested in the material, they feel a sense of ownership, and they will look after it well, and also really connect with the learning experience. We mount the pictures on the color card that matches the continent according to the map of the world. So check out and look for the continent color. For example, if you are choosing to learn about Kenya, this is in the continent of Africa, which is green. So all your pictures would be mounted on green. Similarly, any pictures from a country in Asia, whether it's Japan, whether it is India, those pictures would be mounted on yellow. Once you've learned about a country through the country folder, why not extend the learning a little bit? You know, maybe watch videos, learn dances, sing songs, do some cooking from that country. There is so much you can do to deepen a child's learning. 
As we wrap up our journey today, we want to express our gratitude to you, to our viewers. Thank you so much for joining us at Sunshine Teachers Training as we explore the wonders of Montessori education. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more Montessori content. We appreciate your support in our mission to bring quality education to children around the world. Thank you for being part of this community. Keep fostering a love for learning and a curiosity about the world. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.